Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Welcome Zach episode. Uh, we want everyone to feel welcome. And that's what we're going to do here today with a giant mailbag geared towards getting to learn more about and meet our very good friend, Zachary Robert Polson, who hails from Erie, Pennsylvania, as do we. And uh, yeah, we have a giant mailbag that's been building up. Zach's got a few questions headed his way. But first, as always, I will ask you both, how are you doing this week? I'm good. Had do. <laughs> I would say it does do. I'm doing well. People don't think it'd be like it is. <laughs> oh, but it do. <laughs> but it do. I guess we should dive right in. Yeah. You guys got anything crazy going on? No, nah, dude. No? Nah? Cool. Well, I'm glad we're not going to waste any time on that then because we have <laughs> a boatload of questions. And I know that this is by far everyone's least favorite segment of the show, of which a few slash many of you are very vocal in your hatred for it. <laughs> but, but... The pile of mail in my apartment begs to differ. So, <laughs> like we always say, we'll stop reading them when you, when you stop, stop sending, sending them. them. Yep. Nailed you got it. it. Zach, you're an old timer. And yet, here we, I like that. That was good. Um, <laughs> Carrie from Albuquerque wants to know, hi, Zach. Nice to have you on the show. I feel the same. Uh, what's the best place for a hike in Minnesota? I've been to... A good amount of decent hikes, de decent places for hikes in this state since I've been here. But I landed on uh, the Temperance River slash Carlton Peak hike. And uh, the Temperance River, Temperance River State Park is on the North Shore on Highway 61. <laughs> and, oh, is that uh, the uh, Highway 61? The Highway 61 in uh, northern oh. North Shore, Minnesota. Man, I'm actually kind of glad I learned that little piece of trivia today. Yeah, there you go. That was a nice Bob Dylan, by the way. And it'll come up later. I think there's a mailbag question about uh, Minnesota artists. Anyway, more on that later. Yeah. Oh, good. Good point. And uh, so the Temperance River Carlton Peak Hike is like this two mile, two mile out, two mile back. Uh, don't let it fool you, though. Um, there aren't too many real industrious climbs in Minnesota because it's a pretty flat space. However, Carlton Peak looks out over Lake Superior and a lot of the North Shore you can see into uh, Wisconsin. You're gonna, you look over that little, the arrowhead part of Lake Superior where it comes into Duluth and Superior, Wisconsin, and it just grows and gets bigger so you can see Wisconsin as well. And Would you say that Minnesota is like a top tier state for hikes or would you say it's in the middle somewhere? Did, did the lakes add to it uh, or is it too flat to be up there with the, with the heavy hitters like Utah and things like that, which we on the show like Utah, but I don't know. How do you feel about, you know, like what, which parts of the country are best for that sort of thing? Uh, I think it's hard uh, with the heavy hitters out West, uh, especially considering the amount of time throughout the year that you can hike these hikes and you, and you can do any number of hikes in the wintertime. It's just, you know, sometimes it's negative 20. And it's a little more difficult when it's that much colder. And then the spring and early summer is just loaded with ticks and mosquitoes and other bugs. So it's a little bit less enjoyable during that time of year. And that's that's compared to out west where there's really no mosquitoes. Like on the, I feel like Utah doesn't have mosquitoes or ticks or, hmm. or just a Definitely very, some, very slight. Sounds like heaven. A slight, slight percentage of of those bugs, you know, because Tom, you don't have many bugs in Denver, right? I mean, you can go for a hike and not really be bothered. Right. Yeah, not really. It's honestly one of my biggest reservations about moving back to the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Mosquitoes so, are dumb. Plenty of mosquitoes. State bird of Minnesota, the mosquito. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, huh. it's not really. It's not a bird. We all Makes for a see. nice little uh, small talk joke at work, though, I imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As we are speaking right now, somebody is using that joke in this <laughs> state. <laughs> but uh, yes, I would say the Temperance River hike up to Carlton Peak. Uh, I did it one summer. It was really hot. And me and my buddy Luke ran down the mountain and got ourselves all nice and sweaty. And then we ran Ambitious. down to the lake and jumped in Lake Superior. And uh, if for anyone who has never been in Lake Superior before, it's the coldest 
of the Great Lakes, like a constant super cold temperature of like 48 or 50 degrees, something like that. I don't Damn. Know. But it's really cold are, no is, matter how Are there hot any more are. shallow Great Lakes that might warm up better in the summer? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking about the Lake Erie there, bud. Very specific <laughs> Rust Belt humor, <laughs> if you could even call it that. Lake Erie is very shallow. For those who... Anyway, moving on. Thank you, Zach, for the insight. Carrie, yeah, if she's ever up north, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sure she'll if take your advice. There, That's um, a well thought out answer. You you can't really you can't really miss on the North Shore. There's plenty of uh, scenic byways, uh, many outlooks, and mm. all, all around good hikes on the North Shore. There you go. Nothing like a good byway. Okay, Tom, this one comes from Maggie in Delaware, Ohio. <laughs> Tom, the California Raisins and the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band are up for a rock hall nod in sometime in the near future. Who gets your vote and why? Wait, are they for real? No. This is I, I, oh. I believe this is a hypothetical <laughs> question. If in some kind of weird parallel universe, the California Raisins <laughs> and the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band are up for nominations for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Who gets your vote and why? I, I believe the floor is open for both of you to, to, to give an answer, if you so choose. Wait, are the California Raisins a band? I believe they were a musical group that would be not unlike the Blue Jays, for example, that I believe are in the Rock Hall. Wait, the Blue Jays are a the band? Maybe it's <laughs> the Tom, you're, getting, you're asking the wrong questions too soon no. in this process. <laughs> the California Raisins are a musical act that I believe would be very much eligible. In this parallel universe that involves animatronic bands, I think you're being too technical. Based on their body of work, maybe? Can we start with the discographies? <laughs> I've never heard of the California Raisins, so they must be terrible. You've never heard? You... Um, I've definitely Zach, seen you... the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band at least a handful of times. Um, maybe a small bucket's worth. Um, I vote for them. Zach, if you had to describe the California Raisins to Tom, how would you do so? If Can I were to it? describe the California Raisins? Yeah. Well, I would describe them as a fictional rhythm and blues animated musical group, as well as advertising and merchandising characters composed of raisins. A bunch of fucking raisins. <laughs> yeah, that say. was that was spot on. Actually, yes, uh, it was exactly that. Uh, it made for a nice if you go to like a pumpkin pumpkin display, like a Mason <laughs> Farms back in the area or yeah. something. It makes for a really easy like you know how they turn pumpkins into Shrek and shit like that. Like uh, the California raisins are an easy one because pretty much they already look like crumpled up raisins. You just have to paint the pumpkins purple and put like microphones in front of their faces and stuff. They have a bit, uh, a bit of a Temptations vibe going. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's definitely a piece of uh, American culture, if not, you know, definitely a, kind of an obscure one. But uh, I think they were Grammy nominated for one of their ad hits decades ago. But um, I think, were the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band more of a cover band? <laughs> I anyhow? have no clue what the f*** you're talking about, man. <laughs> Tom, I, I think you're being a little rude to Maggie. I mean, she asked you this question specifically, so I don't think there's any reason to, you know, jump down her throat about it or anything like that. No, but, I just, I'm so confused by the question. I thought you were asking about real, like it was a real band. Oh, it's I can like repeat a, it. It's oh, a commercial? So you're saying, here's, play the club horns. That was a hot take, folks. We've got ourselves <laughs> a hot take. Tom is claiming that the California Raisins and the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band are not real bands. Zach, what say you? <laughs> I well, don't even know I mean, what I'm saying at this point. I appreciate... Um, I think it's pretty damn clear. <laughs> I appreciate both of these bands and and how wonderful <laughs> the time is now that they have finally been accepted into like the running, right? Because John Prine is in the same running. And, you know, I... And w it's clear that you know he's gonna win, and these is he in yet? It, well, he's in the running this year, so go oh, vote. Oh, good for him, good for him. Um, well earned. But but you know when I heard this news as well, um, <laughs> Maggie, I really think that we're missing a very key band here, and that's the band that uh, was at the Possum um, tour stop. Oh, in the Goofy, in the movie? Goofy movie, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think they kind of formed after Chuck E. Cheese got that momentum rolling, though. Can you be like? a rock hall worthy animatronic style band if you're like playing into someone's niche that they've created. You know what I'm saying? Well, does the Pope shit in the woods? I mean, 
<laughs> well, I guess it would happen with Green Day because they someday, if not already, I haven't done my research enough for this, but I imagine they would be in at some point based on their body of work, but they didn't exactly reinvent punk or anything like that. So I suppose the possum band from a Goofy movie would be eligible if they did whatever they do well enough, right? I mean, it's swampy rock, though. I mean, they, 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 they took they it to it a different- They made their own. Yeah, they did. Sure. I, I can give you that. And really, they had no choice because they were created. And, um, I don't think they were a cover band either. I think the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band is a cover band, and I'm just not sure that gets you in. They were hyper- with that said, hyper commercialized. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, and well, sure. I think we Calif- have to also mention at this point the FreeCreditReport.com band. That's a very good point. Are they a one hit wonder? Would be my only major knock on them. They had a couple bops. The one with the the one with the pirate hat was a bop for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> there were a few bops. <laughs> Right. A couple You know, slaps. we might have to do a draft of fictional bands. Um, <laughs> but more on that later. Maggie, thanks. Can we get a quick yes and no on each for, for both of you on this question? Chuck E. Cheese, all the way. California Raisins. Yeah, the the jury is out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side with Zach on this one, California Raisins, just uh, given their, their originality, uh, kind of gives them the upper edge, in my humble opinion. Uh, <laughs> Matthew from Dallas. Uh, Zach, this one's for you. Matthew writes... Uh, the show, Reminiscent FM, by the way, we're at on Twitter at underscore Reminiscent FM. Uh, Zach, how do you make maple syrup? It is so easy, and everyone should do it. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you an abridged version of of it. And really, the the process is very short, so I'm abridging it even further. Um, you collect the sap. How do you collect the sap? Well, you drill a hole into a tree, a maple tree. A sugar maple, preferably. They have the highest sugar content. If you don't content. have a book, how do you find a maple tree? Is there a leaf you look for? There is a leaf you look for. If you were to look at the Canadian flag, you Boy. would see <laughs> <laughs> you would see a maple leaf. And if you were to take that image and walk out into the forest and uh, find a tree with that leaf on it, that- Start drilling friend, holes, buddy. <laughs> is a maple tree. <laughs> Do you need to buy a spigot or can it just be a rudimentary like uh, piece of metal? I tried both and you do not really want to go with a rudimentary piece of metal. You want to drill a hole about like a half an inch wide in a, like a foot to a foot and a half diameter tree about two feet above the ground on the sunny side of the tree. Mm-hmm. Does that warm the, the sap? Yes, it does. And it, it makes it flow that much faster. Mm. But Ultimately, if you have a big enough tree, you'll have taps kind of surrounding the tree. So one tap will produce a little bit more than the other. Um, but your your tap wants to be tapered. So like fattest about the middle of the of the tap, and then it gets a little bit skinnier as it goes into the tree. That way it stays in there. But uh, when you go to pull it out, when you're done collecting sap, you're not you're not fighting friction all the way out. You just have to pull past that fat point in the taper it's like a butt plug oh (laughs) um we uh yeah yeah (laughs) yep yep just just i mean this is just pure science scientific reasoning right and then (laughs) make sure we're putting the right image in people's minds if you do spend like six or eight bucks on a on a pack of five or whatever or something like that they come with uh with a with a hook on the top of them and you can hang your buckets and that's kind of always nice so you collect your sap how long does that take about a day uh depends on the type of tree depends on the season it depends on how uh how your spring is going can i ask a question here real quick sure yeah by all means so i feel kind of embarrassed not knowing this since i was like a woodworker for a while like often work with maple but when you tap a tree is like the center just like a fruit gusher like there's just all the liquid in it or is it still like pretty much solid all the way through the tree and then how does the sap find its way to the butt plug actually you only have to drill about two inches into the tree really and and sap is flowing throughout the tree throughout the outside the exterior of the tree like i don't think the inner core but i would have to double check that but yeah two inches that's all you really need to do sap is flowing throughout that some but but it's not like a liquid core right it's like inner no mixed with all the wood fibers and whatever yes the hell. it's intermixed and that which brings me to uh the next thing the wood fibers so when you collect the sap it's pretty much water and it's got a tiny tiny bit of sweetness to it 
And you want to filter your sap out, like say you collect a five gallon bucket in a day or two five gallon buckets in a day. You want to filter that through like a like a bandana or a or a cheese cloth or, a, or whatever. Yeah, flour flour cloth or something like that, just to filter out those tiny little uh, pieces of wood fibers. And you do that once or twice. And ultimately, when you collect all your sap, you put it into a nice big, what do you want to call it? Like a buffet pan. And you start a fire underneath that. And a buffet pan, because you want a lot of surface area to heat versus like, um, like a, like a noodle pot or something like that with a small surface area on the bottom and like a lot of water because it's easier. Yeah. Cause it's easier to heat the liquid and keep it hot and, and boiling, uh, for longer. You wouldn't have to use so much wood. So it goes a lot, mm-hmm. more, a lot faster. And that's the thing with making maple syrup is you're just literally watching water evaporate and you just have to make that happen for, days on end so can you do this on a stove or does it specifically have to be over like an open flame you can do it on a stove but it takes a long 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 time okay and if you're inside uh all of that vapor um still is kind of (laughs) sticky and we did we we finished a batch (laughs) kind of too soon um and it's not super sticky but if you do it for long enough it's you know, we finished a batch once inside and it was probably two hours and our <laughs> our house was kind of sticky. Our kitchen was a little <laughs> sticky at that oh. point. <laughs> so that's why you want to do it outside just to Is save. it a nice activity to kind of drink and do outside? Oh, it's the best activity because you just, you just sit and make sure that that fire is going nice and hot. And this is early to mid spring. So it's still potentially really cold outside. Oftentimes there's snow on the ground. And all the pictures I've seen. And then when my experience, there was definitely a lot of snow on the ground. So if the whole if the whole point is just boil off the water and what's left ends up being the sweet maple syrup, I mean, how much how much do you have to collect to get like, you know, a Mrs. Buttersworth jar? Like how much boils off? So the perfect world is like 30 to 35 gallons of sap makes one gallon of syrup. Um, that's like sugar maple. Your process is dialed into a T. You know exactly what you're doing. You have a like a hydrometer to measure the the heat and the 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 sugar content, like a candy thermometer type thing. So you're like dialed in. You know exactly what you're you're doing and what you're going for. I ended up boiling like forty gallons to get a gallon. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, of of sap or of syrup, oh. and it also depends on uh, consistency and color, and because my syrup is a little runnier than like the Mrs. Buttersworth, like corn syrup, sticky stuff that's like really really thick and viscous. Yeah, mine's kind of runny, and and that's fine. I mean, I li- I kind of like it that way, and it's still super sweet. It's, it's delicious. And uh, what else? I mean, it's it it's that simple. It's a great activity to sit outside yeah. and drink beer, if, nice. if you would so choose, or smoke a pipe. If you would, you can do that as well. I'm going to name my firstborn son Viscous. <laughs> um, so this one, thank you very much for the thoughtful answer, Matt. I'm sure we'll enjoy uh, the how-to. Very good yeah. stuff there. This one comes from Mad D in Delaware, the actual state, uh, for Tom. <laughs> um. Again, taking it in a little different direction here. Keeping it fun, <laughs> keeping it light. Uh, Tom, razzmatazz or razzle dazzle? <laughs> I always give it the old razzle dazzle, man. F- razzmatazz. Oh, that quick, huh? Okay. Razzmatazz. Okay. What <laughs> the hell did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> what say you, Zach? Oh, well. Okay. I think we have to define the parameters here. What is razzmatazz make you think of and what does razzle dazzle make you think of when you know you know that's a really good point actually <laughs> <laughs> i've been razzled and i've been dazzled oh but i can't say i've ever been razzle dazzled and i've never razzled picture like a like a trick play in football in american football like some little put a little stank on it put a little flash <laughs> on it you know what i'm saying 
I, I think it's you just got to feel it in your heart. Okay. And, and and so unequivocally in your heart, I, I feel like Razzmatazz is more of like a Scrubs reference, move, like smoothie flavor or something. But like, so it's more of a fruity something as opposed to a flashy um, football, American football play. Yeah. I think, I think Razzmatazz to me seems a little more boisterous and oh. um, like maybe something unplanned whereas oh. razzle dazzle is like there's some effort put into it it's elegant it's classy um oh. i'm a i'm a razzle dazzle boy i love it i love and i really am sure that maddie from delaware is loving this as well uh <laughs> that that is just the perfect answer because uh, you do have to feel it in your heart uh as with many things in life are a matter of the heart uh, and this question is definitely an example of that so um yeah, I think I think I think we're done here, gang. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> on to the next question, Maddie. I hope you got what you came for, and I can, I can, I'm pretty confident you did. Uh, Sean from Pittsburgh says uh, this one's for you, Zach. By the way, uh, Zach, when did you first pick up a guitar? Any tips for first timers? Part B to the question. Also, top three musical acts from the state of Minnesota where you currently reside. Mm. When did I first pick up gu- a guitar? Don't remember the age. When did I first like, really pick up a guitar to like play it to say, hey, I'm going to play <laughs> you. I was uh, 12 years old. Wait, wait, is that when we met? Oh, uh, wait, we, we were maybe 13 or 14. So I guess you were playing Thunderstruck in my attic at 13 or 14. That is correct. I feel like you were so good at that point. You must have been playing since you were like six or something. No, no. I mean, I I played the like E minor eleven chord, ooh, which is I'll just an open. It's just like E A D G B E. You just strum the thing when it's. I don't know. That's a joke. I think maybe I heard it for the first time the other day at a at an audition, and it was kind of funny. Sure. Um, or at a recording <laughs> session. Um, How'd that go, by the way? The audition was. Eh, I did fine, but is a little too slow. I think it was a little too slow. A lot of. And uh, nothing against them, but just some older folks. And their music was a little bit slower. And I said, hey, where are your burners at? You know, you guys are a bluegrass band. Let's play some something fast. Like, oh, yeah, okay, let's play a fast one. And it, the tempo was just way too slow. I'm like, oh, okay, I can't do this. I'm sorry. So but, what uh, I'm hearing is they needed a little more razzle-dazzle. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Maddie. Maddie's getting it, and then more. <laughs> they didn't need razzmatazz. They did need razzle dazzle. Yes. Okay, I mm. gotcha. Yes. Could have used a little of both. Right? <laughs> huh? Anything like a, else? Yeah, man, just Jesus. the spritz of of the taz. Just Ooh, gonna yeah. douse of the dazzle, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, you you can't do a scotch of mataz. You can do a you can do a spritz of it, but <laughs> if you're gonna get a scotch of something. You're gonna get a little razz dazz. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody, and like you said, it's something you feel in your heart space. So, anyway, Maddie. I'm sure if she's listening and happen to have heard her question read, she's probably just just uh, over the moon. But you guys' enthusiasm and uh, care intact, as am I. Thank you both. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. Continue. Uh, any tips for first timers? Play, play, play. Play some more. Keep playing. Don't stop. Thinking about tomorrow. Don't stop. And it'll soon be here. Uh, just play, man. Always, always play. Hours of day. Do you think that it's really important to learn other people's music or totally. can you just kind of make your own stuff up? No, it's. I think you find your favorite artist, you learn 75% of their songs, mm. and then within that 75%, you determine what you love about what they play and what you don't like about what they play. And that, in turn, tells you what you like about how you play it and what you don't like about how you play it. And then you change things a little bit to make yourself feel happy when you play their songs. And then you pick another artist. You learn 75% of their material, Material, learn how they play it, learn how you like it better, and then, uh, or like to hear it better if like or play it better. And you take some chords and you switch them around and, and then you, you just kind of learn how to make something up from there. And I think that's I think that's why I'm so shit at guitar because I never wanted to take the time to learn other people's music, so I only know like five basic chords, and I just kind of repeat those over and over. Um, it's very limiting to to not have a big catalog in your brain 
to pull from. Chords are fun to make up too. Like I don't know, I I know a lot of chords, but I don't necessarily know what the names of those chords are. Right. I just know that they sound good in my head. If they're probably in a book somewhere, I'm not I'm not an inventor. They're just they're there. I just I just don't know what they're called, you know. But yeah, top three musical acts from Minnesota. Yeah, Mod Sun. All right, this was really tough for me. You changed number three in the notes <laughs> as you were answering this question, and I'm, I, I want you to explain to the good people why and what originally was there. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I forgot that you could see that <laughs> for one. <laughs> and I, and it's, it's shameful that I forgot about this man, but I'd have to say number. Well, no, it's good because you literally reminded yourself of it when you did your like hiking, uh, explanation. Yeah. I'd say number three would be the hold steady. They've got a pretty, <laughs> pretty okay. deep, deep, uh, space in my heart from that mm-hmm. long, uh, 2012 summer of uh, listening and recording to music and drinking way too much and working and whatever. And, oh, these next two, I mean, they're just so good. They're cemented there, yeah. I think they're tied for first almost. If I were to say, I'm going to say one of the other because one of them follows more of my musical stylings. And I, so I'm going to go with two. Number two is Prince. You can't go mm-hmm. wrong with uh-huh. Prince. And number one is Bob Dylan, Robert Zimmerman. Hmm. And uh, because from from Duluth or also as far as states go, that's a pretty good top two, top three. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like especially top two. I'd other than I guess California or New York, like uh, that's a significantly uh, impressive. Although I guess New Jersey with Springsteen and Bon Jovi might be a decent one-two punch. I might be missing somebody there. Bon Jovi's not legendary like the other two dudes, though. I could live forever without listening to another Bon Jovi song and I'd be just fine. I think most people could. (laughs) Yeah. That's a good (laughs) point. No, Bob Dylan is from Hibbing, Minnesota. Does it fall off drastically? You originally had Trampled by Turtles up there. Would they be in your top four? Does it drop off pretty drastically after those three, those four? Uh, Yeah, after the four. Yeah, I did scratch Trampled off there because Bob deserves that place a lot more. Um, But Trampled's a good band. I do like the bluegrass, new grass stylings. Um, does it drop off? Let me think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. Fair enough. If we if we fact check the episode, maybe it'll be in the next mailbag. Maybe we missed somebody. Apologies if we did. Uh, this one is this next question. Uh, thank you for the answer there, Sean. Hopefully you got what you came for. Um, not everybody can be like Maddie from Delaware, but hey, I hope you got what you came for. So um, try, trying to please the, the good people who write the show, um, even though, again, this is one of the most hated segments that we do. Um <laughs> Sarah from Portland, Maine, who I believe has written the show before and asked this very same question. Uh, Tom, how's it going to be? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like really trying to think of the Oasis lyrics and I can't. (laughs) Oh, oh, dude, 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 dude. No, 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 no. It's, uh. Oh, third, third, oh, third. uh, Yeah, it's third eye blind. Third eye blind. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so I don't know how it's going to be. Uh, I think b- that answer, you saying Oasis, means the answer is it's going to be like that, <laughs> is what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Sarah. <laughs> no, no, you, you still have time. You can salvage this. You got to answer the question, Tom. Zach's been gonna... doing such a good job, and it's like his first time with the mailbag. And these questions have been pretty straightforward, and you are just dropping the ball. <laughs> I'm just whiffing, dude. <laughs> How's it going to be? Yeah, how is it going to be? <sighs> These are so open-ended, it stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> just like you log on to this show to have fun with your friends and you just have active anxiety. Because <laughs> like, do you want a 20-minute synopsis of how my life's been and how I think it's going to go? <laughs> oh, actually, I'm kind of down if you want to shrink that as much as you can into like three sentences. Oh, um, it's fine. But also, it's supposed to be a funny thing about Third Eye Blind, but also, like, I'm down to hear those three sentences. <laughs> um, it's fine. It will be fine. It's going to be fine. Oh, f***. An answer that fits the question. <laughs> to you. Tom, you are a gentleman and a master of this forum. And uh, No, well, I'm striking out. <laughs> no, dude. Just when Sarah thought she had you cornered, you uh, came back. And put it on. Okay, so uh, good stuff there, Zach. Well, that... Any thoughts on how it's going to be? I, I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, th- Sarah, just when you thought you had us cornered, 
<laughs> well, you don't. But also, I will say that song is just torturous to listen to. Uh, <laughs> not because it's bad, but because it just rips your GD heart out. <laughs> Music video, they walk and meet the person at work, which is kind of rude, but also like very like telling about how high the emotional stakes are. Anyway, uh, Gus from Tuscaloosa. Uh, Zach, this one's for you. Gus writes... What is a Minnesotan goodbye, and how can we handle one if we find ourselves in the middle of, of that particular situation? Oh, mm. it took me, and it's still taking me, quite uh, you know, a lot of energy to make it through these goodbyes. And I've, I've actually I've started to almost goodbye in the Minnesota way myself. Sometimes I just don't feel quite ready to say goodbye. For real. Is that, is, that the, is that the definition, the down and dirty definition oh. for those who don't know? Don't worry. I'll say goodbye, but I will start another sentence afterward. And I will <sighs> keep talking to you. And then I will say goodbye again. And then you'll say goodbye. And then I'll say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. And then I'm really we'll bad start at those, another sentence sentence and we'll yeah. just keep talking and we'll keep talking does that ever mean that like it was a good party and you're just uh, don't want to say goodbye or is it always awkward no usually the good parties are like oh i gotta get out here this is great thanks and then they go and it's great mm. it's usually the slower quieter nights where it's just so awkward for some reason to say you okay, find a rhythm great, after all night you. struggling through conversation yeah, and you just you just can't let go. You just can't really go. And it's funny because sometimes it goes from everyone sitting, and then everyone stands up to be polite, <laughs> right. and then people are standing now, and another conversation will start. Now we're standing. Mm -hmm. Now we're less comfortable. Well, <laughs> now, and the, and the next thing that happened was whoever's leaving will go put their shoes on. So now you're further away. You're still standing. And there's an action being in place. And now it's awkward because you're standing and someone's putting their shoes on. And then the shoes are on. And then another conversation strikes up. And then maybe the door will open. And this is like 15 to 30 minutes sometimes. <laughs> it's like, wow, I've been standing for a long time. the fact that there's time. a name for it make people any more self-aware about what's going on as it's happening? Or is it just always bad? Wait, what? What'd you say? Like the fact that there's a name for it. Like you could probably search on Urban Dictionary, Minnesota Goodbye. You know, it's a phenomenon of family gatherings that happens across the country, I'm sure. Do you think because there's a name for it, that makes it easier to identify and get out of? Or do you feel like it's still a problem, even if it's well-known or not? It's still a problem, whether it's well-known or not. Um, it's Is it easier a politeness to... thing or a lack of awareness thing? It's it's more of a joke when you're with people that aren't from Minnesota, but I've caught on to the Minnesota goodbye. Like a lot of our neighbors here on the block are like not from Minnesota and they get mm. like caught up and sometimes get caught up in the Minnesota goodbye where it just takes a little bit longer. Like, man, that was really a Minnesota goodbye, wasn't it? And they would say, yeah, that kind of was. Um, but the true to the core of Minnesotans who haven't left in 50 years or were born here, they know what it is, but they don't realize that they're doing it. The telltale signs. Yeah, if you can't get out, if you find yourself inside one, I don't know, stand firm, Buckle stand your in. ground, stand your ground, or sit back down. You don't have to stand at all. You can uh. sit back down and send the message. Or yeah. if you're the lever, just go. It's, you know, it, it's really easy to say, okay, great, thanks, bye. The hardest part for the for the Minnesotan leaving is like, is, is not saying something, just, you know, gathering your things, opening the door, saying bye and leaving. So, yeah, goodbye. See ya. Later. See ya. See ya. Deuces. All right. Well, there you go. Gus, uh, sounds like you're in the middle of an Alabama goodbye, if you ask me. But uh, <laughs> hopefully things down Tuscaloosa way uh, are easier for you at your next gathering, my good my good man. Uh, this next one also comes from Tuscaloosa way. It's from our old friend Terry. Terry from Tuscaloosa has a question for Tom. And alliteration is our friend here at the show. So that was... Intentional. Uh, Terry from Tuscaloosa <laughs> says, Tom, could you describe in detail the route you'd take to where you walk to King Supers for groceries? No reason. <laughs> Thanks. Love you. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the soups, as we call it, from my front yard. Is, it, uh, is that what you call it? The soups. Yeah. The soups, S O O P S. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will walk out my door, mm -hmm. take about 15 paces straight forward, um, okay. due west, 
And mm. then uh, open the front gate, make sure it's closed so the little puppers doesn't get out. Yep. Uh, turn 90 degrees to the right, to mm. north, and yep. uh, go straight forward until you're in the front door. Uh, but I never walk to King Supers because I have a Ooh. car. So why would I be walking 75 yards with my own feet? I will get in the car and burn those dead dinosaurs and uh, drive my way over there. Is there any particular reason you would like to burn these dinosaurs? Have you ever are, are the trips usually too much of a haul for that long of a walk? Well, I mean, yeah, we're usually filling up like an entire car. With oh yeah, we talked about this two and a half weeks ago. You, you guys definitely shop less, carry more back, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But like, <sighs> yeah, I guess I just wouldn't walk. Like, if I needed just one thing, I just would not go. <laughs> okay, okay. I have a feeling Terry will be writing us back. On the- <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. But thank you for being so honest about your direct route. And hopefully Terry uh, is not in the state of Colorado at the moment uh, because that would be detrimental to your safety, I feel. <laughs> Terry, you're on thin ice, bud. Um, yeah, so I think that is it for the mailbag portion. Uh, how do you guys feel? That, w- that was an intense one. Uh, oh, actually, there's one at the bottom here that I didn't see. This one is also for Tom. Zach, you're a newcomer, and you've told us a lot about yourself today. But, uh, you know, Tom gets a lot of mail. What can we say? He's a rock star. People (laughs) uh, generally ask about his feet, but today that has not happened. And uh, let's take a look at this next letter. It is from Tabitha from Knoxville, Tennessee. And Mm. she asks, Dear Tom, what would you say your BAC content is? Uh, uh, Well, first of all, isn't BAC content... Like the same content redundant. It's like a ATM machine, uh, blood alcohol content content. Okay, yes. In Tom's world, good folks of the Midwestern time zone and other time zones, uh, in Tom's world, that means blood apple cider content. Uh, so the C <laughs> would not be redundant, Tabitha. Uh, and Tom will go on to explain that his is very high. It sounds like this fall you've downed quite a bit of the old juice there, haven't you? Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> <F-ing>, um... <laughs> 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 uh with dinner right before we started recording i just finished <laughs> my fifth gallon <laughs> since the first oh. day of fall <laughs> 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 so i guess the the bac content is looking like a uh, 0.40 at least um oh at least 40% is... apple cider at this point. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the legal limit? Just for <laughs> health purposes. Like, how are you alive? <laughs> no, dude. So, like, yeah, I've been drinking a lot. I love it. I'm already, like, oof, I'm burning through my budget. I've only budgeted $300 for apple cider this fall. got to slow down. That's a, a hefty budget. Good. That's uh, It means you're doing well, I'm sure. <clears throat> it's good shit, man. I can't stop. And like I said... The calorie content of one gallon of apple cider is the same as one frozen pizza. <laughs> so one so less I'm frozen pizza good, a man. week and you're good, it. dude. I just went below 200 pounds for the first time in a year, so I think it might actually be the juice. What? Nice. Yeah. Good for yeah. you, man. Are Thanks, you feeling dude. good? Feeling healthy? I still have another 20 pounds to lose, but I'm feeling better. <laughs> well, well, that's good. That's all you can ask for. More apple cider. That's the answer. Zach, do you have any anything to weigh in on on the on the what, what's your apple cider content in your blood? Um. Well, last week I had uh, a considerable amount. I was laid up on the couch for a while, and uh, my lovely wife purchased some apple cider because she thought it would make me feel good, and uh, and it did. It made me feel Ooh. really good. And that's the only time Shout I've had Shout out it. to Ellie. Yeah. I haven't had it since. Bummer. Yeah. That's okay, How'd though. the surgery go? Uh, oh, surgery yeah. went well. I survived it. And it fixed. They fixed everything that was wrong. Now I have, like, this, um, this baseball-sized sheet of wire mesh, basically, in my abdomen to keep... To keep my intestines from pouring through my uh, my abdominal wall into places Dumb. that they aren't supposed to be. Dumb. Oh, for sure. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you weren't here last week. But we're glad to have you back. Uh, we're going to try to keep you off the opiates. And uh, yeah, feeling good. 
Yeah, you missed the Avril Lavigne episode. But, oh, uh, man. I know, I know. I, I was know. really tired and I was in some pain and I was like, I almost had to go back to work on Wednesday, but I woke up and said, well, I probably shouldn't go back today. So I didn't. But um, I did sleep in because I was still pretty tired, pretty sore from the whole operation. But yeah, I'm glad I'm back too. I'm not 100% yet. I Like today I was in some pain too because I, I pushed it too hard all week. And that's well, of course, that's gosh my MO. darn it, don't do that. Yeah, that's my MO. But I'm going to kind of take it easy tomorrow. Well, good. Good, man. I think one day of taking it moderately easy will definitely be what makes up for <laughs> pushing it for an entire week. <laughs> take care of yourself. There's people that love you in this world. Yep. You son of a gun. All right, should we do favorite songs and get the heck out of here? Yeah, let's do song of the week. John, John, John. Well, I'll go first. Uh, Trampled by Turtles was mentioned in Zach's uh, honorary mention of Minnesota artists. Uh, and they have some 2018 efforts out. Uh, the song The Middle makes my song recommendation this week. Like he, I think you described it best when you said they were New Age folk or whatever you said. New Grass. New Grass. Oh, New there Grass. You go. Never like heard that. that. Uh, anyway, that probably describes the way this tune sounds to a T, and uh, I like it. It's a little upbeat. It's pretty good. Uh, hard to not like, I guess. And that's my recommendation this week. The Middle by Trampled by Turtles. I have been listening to this band called The True Loves, and they're an instrumental kind of jazz band. I don't know if they're jazz or not, but this song is called Sunday Morning. So The True Loves doing Sunday Morning, and the particular version is like a live on KEXP out of Seattle. And um, they are just killing it with a baritone. Do they bring the thunder? They do. You got to listen to it. A baritone sax, two trombones, and a and an alto sax. Great guitar player, great bass player. Uh, Barry Sax? Ooh, yeah, Barry Sax, dude. It's <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's good. So dope. While we were recording, an old recommendation of ours direct hit released a single and they're now streaming their new album i haven't heard it yet because it was just announced as we were recording it's called welcome to heaven i know amanda uh wrote to me after that recommendation saying she really dug into their album and really loved it so i'm gonna hope for good things from the new album and Ooh. uh they're really kind of bombastic <sighs> i don't want to say pop punk because that doesn't really I don't know, some kind of indie punk rock, uh, melodic, a little bit yelly at times, a little bit chaotic, a lot of fun. Typical Amanda. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if it's more of a summer jam, but I guess uh, anytime you're feeling rowdy, I feel like throwing on direct hit is a good option, and hopefully this album will I'm sure follow direct nice hit would love that album. endorsement, quite frankly. Yeah. Zach, hopefully the everybody got to know you a little better this week, and I, I feel like we found a nice little groove this week as we inch ever. What are we at? Ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-eight. So we're we're almost there. We're we're gonna drop the uh, got a couple episodes planned once we hit ninety-nine, one hundred, and the rebrand and everything like that as we become a exclusively well pseudo exclusively uh, music podcast. But um, yeah, it was a good one. I, mean, I hope everyone enjoyed as much as I did hearing about uh, what you had to say, Zach, about where you live and what you do and things like that well thanks y'all uh make it up to minnesota i don't know uh beware of the goodbyes and <laughs> uh look for some maple trees we're pretty close to canada so you can look at the flag if you get lost mm -hmm. and yeah all you folks out there here we, we skirt I along canadian content unintentionally far more than we do intentionally and uh I was surprised we don't have more Canadian fans, although Matt is a, a true, true, uh, true fan of the show. How's it going, Matt? Much love. Are we doing a Minnesota goodbye right now? <laughs> oh, my God, we are. Well, see you later, guys. Love you. <laughs> see ya. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>